California desert in 1990, pilot Jack Britton is performing aerial acrobatics while showing his ultralight aircraft to a prospective buyer. The customer's wife videotapes the plane as it loops and spins when disaster suddenly strikes. Pull the chute, pull the chute. Come on, Jack, pull the chute. As the plane falls to earth, Jack wonders how he'll survive the crash or if the chute will fall apart. As the plane hits the ground, the customer runs to Jack's aid to find that remarkably he has escaped almost certain death. You okay? <laughs> I don't know. I might have sprung a toy. It is now August 2009 and it appears that ultralight training concerns are about to be addressed. When the sport pilot light sport aircraft regulations were developed, it was envisioned that flight training for people who wanted to fly ultralight aircraft would be conducted in aircraft certificated in the special light sport aircraft category. As a bridge until sufficient special light sport aircraft could be produced, the FAA allowed the use of transition two-place ultralight trainers certificated as experimental light sport aircraft to be used for compensated flight training until January the 31st, 2010. The FAA envisioned this time frame would allow time for aircraft manufacturers to produce two-seat ultralight trainers as special light sport aircraft in sufficient quantities to satisfy the need for ultralight training schools. Unfortunately, this did not happen, as only three manufacturers have produced an ultralight style special light sport aircraft. In addition, the economy and lack of available financing have reduced the market for such planes. Currently, 70 ultralight aircraft are listed on the EAA Sport Pilot Flight Instructor listing. Most, if not all of these aircraft are now experimental light sport aircraft and may not be used for compensated flight training after January 31st, 2010. Consequently, after that date, there will not be an adequate number of two-place ultralight aircraft trainers available for compensated flight training. This will create a safety issue because people wanting to fly ultralights will not be able to take flight training in an ultralight style aircraft. To solve this problem, the FAA and EAA have discussed the issuance of a letter of deviation. This action would allow the permanent use of experimental light sport aircraft for training ultralight pilots with no timeline attached. It would improve safety due to the increased available ultralight aircraft training vehicles and clear up confusion within the piloting community. In addition, Aerosports Connection has filed an exemption, FAA 2009-0344, requesting an extension of the current ELSA trainer deadline until January 31, 2012. The FAA has not identified a timeline for final decision, but it is evaluating which method would be best, best used to address the need to offer continued ultralight style aircraft for training purposes. In either case, it appears that ELSA trainers will be allowed to be used for ultralight training following the upcoming January the 31st, 2010 deadline. No matter which remedy FAA chooses, owners will have to obtain a new airworthy certificate and operating limitations. For more information, visit www.eaa.org for continuing updates on this story. <laughs>